the problem we've been given to solve is to look at the circuit we have here and solve for current at any point in the diagram. Now, because it's a complex network, we have to start somewhere and uh, break it down. So what we're going to begin with is determining the total resistance of the R1, R2 network. We know that for resistors in parallel, the formula we need to use is this one. 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So what we're going to do first of all is substitute those numbers in. So we get 1 over RT is 1 over 560 plus 1 over 330. Uh, then we can sim uh, simplify this so that 1 over RT is equal to 0.004816. Okay, now remember what we've actually got here is 1 over RT, we haven't got RT. So to get RT, invert the value. So RT equals 1 over 0.004816. And if you stick that in your calculator, the value you get is RT equals 207.64 ohms. Now we've worked out the effective resistance of the first part of the network, RT is equal to 207.640, ohm. we can move on to the next part of the network. And again, this is uh, resistors in parallel, so we use the same formula. So in this case, 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 plus 1 over R5. Then we can substitute in the values. And you can see we get 1 over 680 plus 1 over 680 plus 1 over 680. Uh, now before you start sticking this in the calculator, uh, let's, let's have a look at uh, what else we could do. When you're adding together fractions, you need to put them over the same uh, denominator. So in this case, 680, 680, 680, the denominator is the same in every case. So we can simplify this by saying 1 over RT equals 3 over 680. But remember, this is 1 over RT, and what we're actually looking for is RT. So we have to invert both sides. So we end up with RT equals 680 over 3. So RT equals 226.667 ohms. So now we have the effective resistance of this part of the network and this part of the network. So what we need to do now is find the effective resistance of all the resistors. Uh, before we do that, it can be slightly confusing because what we've ended up with now is two RTs. So let's just uh, clarify exactly what they are. So this RT is a combination of R1, R2, and this RT is a combination of 3, 4, 5. So uh, we won't use RT again uh, for those values. It will be confusing if we do that. So. Let's move ahead and find the total resistance of the circuit. So because we now have, in effect, resistors in series, not in parallel, uh, we're going to use the other formula, where RT equals R12 uh, plus R345. And we're substituting the values that we have already, 207.640, 226.667, and simply add them together. So we end up with the effective resistance of the circuit being 434.307 ohms. Now we have the total resistance for the circuit, and um, we know the voltage, we can work out the current. So to work out the total current in the circuit, IT, we use Ohm's law formula, which is V equals IR. Now the problem is we know what V is, we know what R is, so we need to do a little bit of trans, uh, transposition. So we come up with the total current is equal to the voltage divided by the total resistance. And we substitute in the values. V is 100 volts. RT is 434.307. Then we can calculate total current for the circuit. So the total current comes out at 0 0.2303 amps. Now, uh, normally, what you would do is you would actually convert that into milliamps. So that IT equals 
milliamps, but in actual fact, for the rest of the calculations, we can use the 0 0.2303. So let's keep both values there. Now we know what the total current is around the circuit. Um, we know what the effective resistance of this part of the network is. We can actually work out the voltage drop across the R1, R2 network using Ohm's law and substituting in the values for I and R1 and 2 we can now calculate what the voltage drop is across V1 and 2. So substituting in the values we end up with I is equal to 0 0.2303 R1 and 2 is 207.640 ohms and if we multiply those two we find out the voltage drop across there is 47.819 volts. So similarly, for the voltage drop across the R3, R4, R5 network, we're going to use Ohm's law and substitute in the effective resistance to see what we get. So I is 0.2303 and R345 is 226.667 ohms. So if we multiply those, the voltage drop across uh, the network R3, R4, R5 is actually 52.201 volts. So the next part of the question is to find the current flowing through R1. So to find the current uh, we're going to use Ohm's law. So let's start off by sticking Ohm's law in there and transposing for I. So we end up with I equals V over R. Well in this case the V is the voltage drop across that R1, R2 network which we calculated as 47.819 volts and R1 is 560. So let's put those into the uh, equation. So I is 47.819 divided by 560 and if we calculate that I is 0.0854 amps. Uh, now if we stick that into a standard form we end up with I equals 85.4 milliamps. So the final part of the question is to work out the current flowing through the resistor R3. So as in the previous part of the question uh, we're looking at for the voltage drop across that network which would calculate at 52.201 volts and we know that R3 is 680 so we can stick those into the uh, Ohm's law formula and work out the answer. So I is equal to 52.201 divided by 680 which works out as I is 0 0.07677 amps Converting to standard form, 76.77 milliamps. So that's the end of the question. Um, when, you, when you're going through it, I know I've, I've gone over the top with how I've laid this out, but in actual fact, uh, an abbreviated form is that, of that is very useful to you when you come to do your revision. If you just stick the numbers in and do the calculation, um, A, you don't know if you get the wrong answer where you've gone wrong, and B, when it comes to revising, makes it very difficult to remember exactly what you've done. So I would recommend you take some time, draw some abbreviated diagram, write down your formulas before you stick the numbers in the calculator. Okay, cheers.